taking the stage. And there goes Stephen Norton through the curtain. Mike Borja is stepping up there, and I guess Billy Moran might. Yeah, there he goes. And I'm here. Well, crap, if we're all here. That means it's, a, it's good for a, a show. There must be a thing. It's a quorum. <laughs> yes? Thank you. Oh, more cowbell. This is what Rob does in this song. This is part of his thing. <laughs> All these years we've been working on that. This Rich okay. took me aside <laughs> and he said, uh, "Come on, just so you know." I had a little so, weird sidebar. Yeah, you had yeah. some tutelage. Well, well, well the, pro the, the thing is that Julian is it gets so excited that he forgets the power of the jump, and so <laughs> I'll go, "Oh, and he'll take the stage. I, I'm so pacing. This, then we have five more bars of death for me to sing, <laughs> and then he'll start this. And Billy like da 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 da, and he goes. <laughs> and we have to stop whenever he jumps. The, the secret, the real thing is, I want to be Pete Townsend from The Who. Oh, nice. And I, I, every time that goes, I just want to do the windmill. You want to I don't jump care. Out. I'd I just be it. on the floor. <laughs> anyway, there we go. We don't want to lose you in the process. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get off the stage and let you enjoy this fella, Julian Richings. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Hello. Oh, it's so good to see you. Hello, hello, hello. My goodness, what a big hall. Can you hear me over there? Yes, yes, good, good, good. My goodness me, I'm going to have to, I'll get a stiff neck, like talking to everybody like this. Okay. Well, ah, well, well, well. It's my first time in Charlotte. What a lovely place. Uh, uh, now, how many folks are from Charlotte? From North Carolina. Oh, yeah. Whee. Well, I'm staying in a different hotel. I'm not in this hotel. I'm in a one just down the road, you know. And I, I love it because like, I grew up in England, so just down the road is like just down the road. But here it's like miles and miles and miles down the highway. And it's like, oh, it's just up the road. It's just up the road. Anyway, we're there. And there's a, an anime convention going on in the building. So it's kind of weird. I'm walking around and there's all these people really dressed up in stuff. I'm such an old fuddy duddy. I, I look at people dressed in these fantastic like pink leotards and stuff and go, wow, that's amazing. Anyway, on my way here, um, there was a bunch of people coming the other way and they all had these big foam heads on and they all went bang and st crashed into me and they went, oh, and they just carried on because they were worried about their costumes. I thought, they're not supernatural fans. I thought, that's the difference. If I walk through a whole army of supernatural fans, there'll be a parting of the waves. Like, don't touch that guy. Don't touch him. Be careful. <sighs> yeah, so I thought, yeah, okay. And it was actually kind of fun not to be, no, like, not somebody going, oh, my God, oh, my God, and running the other way, you know. I always tell the story. It's one of my, my favorite things that ever happened. I'm sorry if I, I'm boring you with telling it you again, if you've been again. But so I was in Dallas one time, and for some reason, we, we, were, we had our rooms in the hotel, in the convention center above where the, the actual event was, where the con was. And so we were way up on the very fancy floor. And uh, we, anyway, the, the person with me pressed the button first to go down to the convention floor. And something went wrong. Anyway, the, the first floor, um, guy gets on. He gets on, and he's 
stands there and he's kind of like one of those guys pretending you're not in the room, you know, like he's just there, he's getting on with his life. And then, um, and then we go down again and everybody on every floor seems to be getting on. And then we come to this one floor and then there's a whole bunch of um, fans, like probably about six or seven people and they're all talking to each other and they're all getting ready and they're saying, this door, this door, and they come up and they look at me and they go, ah! And then they run away like this, they don't get on. And, but that wasn't the best bit. The best bit was the rest of the 13 floors going down. The other guy that was in there just doing this, and he kept looking at me going. <laughs> so wondering what I'd done, what, what I was going to do. Or, like, that, that was the best. I wish somebody had photographed him, you know. Anyway. Well, well I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> I am. Um, I, hello. Hello. Are you, have you got interesting, penetrating questions? Because I will never answer them. I just waffle on forever. Hello over there. Hello. Hello. It feels like, I don't know, some sort of like big gangplank or something. <laughs> Captain Richings is coming down to see you. Avast there, my heart. Anyway. Um, uh, yes. I, or I'll just chatter on for a minute or two. Hi there. Um, well, I've, I've sort of, I've, there's been a resurgence of death recently, have you noticed? Did you ever see the Supernatural parody? I can't believe, like, I, I, I went, I, I had fun and I, I did, but suddenly everybody's going, he's back, he's back. Well, I've always been around, you know, I never see myself as being absent, but it is nice to be about and send hello to everybody. Everybody thinks that I've suddenly come from the dead. He's, he's lurking. And I've just, I actually, last week, I was on a film set. It was a historical epic. And I was in historical epic clothes, which means hot and uncomfortable. <laughs> and it's like big starchy shirt and big jacket and knickerbockers going down to there, right? And the only way that we could use the set, it was a historical village, was that we had to use it from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., like all through the night, where there were no tourists going through the, this historic village. And, uh, of course, it's favorite time for mosquitoes. I don't know if you guys... That, now, I live in Canada, up in uh, northern Ontario, which is mos capital mosquito country, capital of the world, I think. Anyway, so I'm there. Here's the evidence. Oh, you can't really see it. You can't really see it. I tell you, I, it was like, I was, because so, I had tights here, and they were very sheer tights. And uh, uh, so I'm in the middle of a scene, and I'm speaking like ye oldie English, trying to remember, oh, thou art forsaken, forsooth thou art, and then suddenly, whack, oh, you know, and I'm trying to keep going, and then there's, and I don't know whether to acknowledge the fact that there's five mosquitoes going around my head, and to just do that or whether to just keep going anyway it's a hard life being an actor especially a dead actor especially what anyway well I, th I think you've probably heard enough from me uh, so let's, let's have some questions um all right that looks like a bigger line over there let's start over there sorry i keep i'm i'm not very still like this is for civilized people <laughs> that sort of like hello my name's julian richings Ask me some questions. Yeah, it's for those kind of people. I'm not one of those people. I sort of like I'm a bit, I'm actually the opposite of death, I think. I'm sort of like, I'm a bit bouncy. <laughs> I drive my family mad. So uh, I'm gonna bounce over to the left-hand side of the stage. Hi. Hi. Welcome, what's your question? So I was in Denver last weekend. Right. And there was a really lovely girl there named Krista who did Mad Libs and kind of wanted to bring that over here to Charlotte. So I was wondering if you could give me a noun and an adverb. A noun, just off the top of my head? Yeah, whatever comes to mind first. A noun and an adverb. What's a noun? <laughs> no, uh, okay, a noun. Banana? Is that okay. a noun? That, I mean, that works. Does that work? Yeah. And an adverb. Um, Interesting. 
Interestingly. Okay. <laughs> thank you, my gra gra grammaticians. Gr I know this is going to get turned into some horrible thing that I said. Julian Riching said, banana, interestingly, Lee, or something. No. I mean, if somebody gives Julian Richings as one of the nouns, then it could end up that way. <laughs> oh. So pass that along to uh, okay. the other cast members. All right. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. All right, I'm going over here. It's about time I moved. <sighs> I get my exercise this way. Yeah, no, 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 no. You wait to karaoke. Yeah. You coming to karaoke? I can't sing, but I can dance. So I'll dance. All right. Okay. Hey, Julian. Hey. What was your reaction when you found out that you would be playing the death character on Supernatural? Oh, okay. Um, well, that's, that's a really good question. It's a bit of a long answer, but I'll, I'll, I, I never really... I was happy, first of all. Any actor is happy getting a role. I don't care what they say. You know, you hear in actors interviewed and people ask questions like, what made you decide to play death in Supernatural? Because I got offered the part? <laughs> like, d don't believe the fibs, right? Like, anyway, I was delighted to get the job. It's a good show. I, I knew that it was a good show. I didn't know a lot about it, about Supernatural. You, you know, as an actor, you kind of know a little bit about a lot of things, but you tend not to specialize in one show. But I had already auditioned about nine months to a year before. I'd put myself on tape. And the producers had asked a bunch of people to put themselves on tape for the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. And the only uh, script that was available was uh, Pestilence. So I put myself on tape reading the role of Pestilence. And not, I don't think because I was auditioning for Pestilence necessarily, but that's the character that the writers had figured out. So I put myself on tape and then sent it off and forgot about it. You sort of have to forget about it, otherwise you take it very personally. When are they going to call? When are they, you know, you forget it. Anyway, nine months later, my agent says, oh, you've got a, a role on Supernatural. And I said, wow, great, pestilence. No, death. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so, so that was my first reaction, was actually surprise, because I, I, and when I thought about it, I thought, well, yeah, I'm much more suited to, to play death. Can't imagine why, cheekbones, <laughs> British accent, you know, all that stuff. But uh, anyway, um, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you. That's the secrets. You heard them here first. The secrets behind the roles in Supernatural. What do you think about that? Yes, well. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, my question is, if you're confronted by death, how would you react? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, I hope it's Lisa Berry. <laughs> I like her. It's funny. Um, it's funny how, I, I guess it's sort of a semi-serious answer to yours, is that, you know, characters in fictional shows become important. And I think that's a lot of people take the role of death very seriously. And it's kind of uh, necessary for us to identify certain characters or certain aspects of death and life and birth and heroism and stuff. So it's kind of exciting and it's a responsibility to play death because let's face it, I mean, it's something that affects all of us and we can, we can joke and laugh, but it's a very serious thing. So I... Um, I don't know. I, I'm happy to portray a character who, who I think operates in the world as a sort of um, as a force, not as an evil being, not as somebody that's like, there's that nasty man again, but as somebody that's doing a job and performing a function that allows other life to, mm. to continue. So I think it's kind of complicated. Um, and what I would feel if I saw death, like either joke, not like as a, as a fictional character, but it really, I don't know, it's a very, it's a very serious thing. So it, the, my portrayal touches on that serious thing that all of us have a personal relationship with in one way or another. So that allows me to kind of be a little bit, um, have a twinkle in the eye and sort of say, well, we're all human 
And we all share that fear and that um, concern, but we're here to enjoy it. And I think that's the, the writing is so good in that it's a bit of like he's, he's plays death, my character, but he's very aware of life and how exciting food is and the companionship of Dean and Sam <laughs> and how annoying they are. And how you should never, ever, ever give over your scythe to them. <laughs> ever. Never trust them. But, you know, that, so it, it, there's a lot of aspects, and, and I'm very happy to play that. It's kind of a, I haven't exactly answered your question, but I think you get the idea. Yeah. All right. But, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Over now. Another 10 yards over here. Hi. 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 I'm really nervous. Oh, don't be. <laughs> Seriously. Do you want to come? I, I'll come and ask. You can ask me. Wait, wait. Ask me. Wait, ask me. What's the question? Um, so I was going to ask um, about how you think that Billy and Seth would interact. Okay. All right. Like, do you think they met before? Right. Yeah. Okay, so the question is, how did Billy and Death interact? How do I think that they might interact? Well, I'm the glamorous one, and Lisa is the muscle. So I'm the good looks. No, I, I, I seriously, um, I don't know. I, I think it's kind of a fun thing. On, on an honest, honestly, I, I think that I've, I was talking about this before I came on stage, actually. I think it represents a very positive um, development in our industry. And isn't it cool that um, the representative of death suddenly goes from being an old white guy to an elegant black woman? Isn't that cool? Yeah, I, I think it is. And uh, it's something that we, we shouldn't even be saying is cool because it should be the norm. But it isn't. We know that. And, uh, but it does indicate a shift and a change in our fiction and our characters and our worlds, you know, and an acceptance of who carries stories. And it's beginning to happen more and more. And um, something for me as an actor, I, I find myself on a lot of film sets. And what I'm beginning to realize now is that not only are there more women, there's more diversity in the casting, but also there are a lot more women... ADs, and also cinematographers. That's the big thing for me. Because when you think of it, most film that you see is shot through a man's lens, right? Male camera directors. But now, women cinematographers are actually having the final say on what the shot looks like, whether there should be a different frame, whether there should be more light. And that, to me, is very important because it's, it, it's a woman's perspective, right? So... Uh, I think, and death is equally embodied in a woman as it is in a man. And, and I think that that's the creativity of, of the show Supernatural and, and why it's kept going for so long is that it is willing to take those risks to get rid, I don't mean get rid in a negative way, but to say, okay, we're moving on from this character and, and it's represented now by another person. And I think that's healthy. So, um, so I'm sort of like riffing on your question here. But yeah, it, and on a personal level, Lisa and I get on very well. We're actors. We both live in Toronto. And I know Lisa, and I've seen a lot of her work. She's seen a lot of mine. And the funny thing is, we haven't seen each other since she played Death, since she played Billy. So it's one day, I think we should do, be Death Squad. <laughs> like, the, the two of us should team up, and that, that would be fun. I think, it, like, yeah, we'd take on the brothers. Me and Lisa together, yeah, well, you know. And then it would be, who do you like best? <laughs> Billy or Death? Anyway, so th I haven't exactly answered your question, but thank you. And thanks for um, staying up there, being strong. Big round of applause, right? Yeah. Hi. Hello. Um, I was wondering if you could play any other character on the show, who would you play? <laughs> okay. Okay, so I, I mean, we all have self-image of ourselves, right? And, and I, I really do see myself as this 
weird old guy that's in the show somehow has found himself in this show surrounded by very beautiful people. So I always have this secret little fantasy. Who is the beautifulest, cutest of them all? Well, for me, Kevin Tran. So I think it would be the funniest. I, I would love to be Osric Chow, really. I went, because he's so cute. Even when he's dressed like Sam Winchester, he's still like, he's unbelievable. So I would like to sort of be able to walk on camera and look like he does. He's got this like, <sighs> so that's, that's who I'd like to be. I think Kevin Tran. All right. So I, I, have a, I have a man crush on him. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hi. Hello. <laughs> um, so I was wondering, since Gabriel uh, knew about the rings, yep. uh, do you think that all of heaven and hell also knew about the rings and like, could contact like death and stuff? Ooh, you're asking a, a big philosophical question because us actors pretend we know the answer. You know, we, I go, yes, well, actually, um, the rings are belonging to the upper galaxy of intelligence. So, you know, no, to be honest with you, I don't know. I give, I give it a, a certain amount of thought, right, as an actor, because you, you have to. You have to enter into the world. But I, most things are from my own point of view, and I figure with the rings as well, uh, my logic is that it's important to the horseman, and it's important to death, and everything begins and ends with death, because he is a very, very special character, even within the horseman. So I think that death has a special knowledge. That's, that's the way I do it. I don't necessarily think that the writers of Supernatural would agree with that. You know, we all carry our own different interpretations, but that's mine. Okay, thank, thank you. you. You see, at least I'm being honest. I, I won't cheat an answer. Uh, hello. Hi. Hi. So my question is, Billy plays a very serious death, and your death is a bit more sarcastic and lenient sometimes. <laughs> okay. So is there a chance that when death was a reaper, he was more like you? When death was a reaper. He was a cheeky bugger. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Um, I do, it's funny you should say that. I guess, mm -hmm. uh, she, uh, yes, she is serious. I think, she, I think of her as very elegant and very sort of in command. Mm -hmm. But then, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at me. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, okay, so I joke. But mm -hmm. I think what you do in a character like death is that you just bring aspects of your own personality into right. it. Right. right. And the same with any good portrayal is generally, you know, it's like 60% of the, per the actor mm -hmm. and 40% of the character or whatever right. that mix is. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of me, there's a lot of my, so I've got a bit of a twinkle in my eye. <laughs> and so I, I evolve that relationship with Jensen particularly because I work a lot with right. Jensen in the show. So I think we evolved that understanding and then the writers kind of matched it in a way and kept the fun of the junk food and the stuff going. Mm -hmm. So they put that in as a theme, mm -hmm. and, and that just came naturally. Gotcha. Uh, and I think because I'm an older guy with Dean, it makes the relationship different. So mm -hmm. I'm more like an uncle, in a way, like right, an old yeah. uncle that's kind of got a cheeky nephew that he wants <laughs> to be stern with. It's more like that, you yes. know? Whereas with Billy, mm -hmm. she, like I say, she's an elegant um, younger woman, mm -hmm. and so it's a little different. It's like there's a different dynamic there, and they just, they play their dynamic, and she's, she has great bearing and, mm -hmm. and great um, stature, right? Yes. So, so I think she, she holds on to that as an actor, and it feels right for the scenes, too. So it's just, just different. But it's funny you say, what was your words? What was your description? <laughs> Um, sarcastic, was it? Sarcastic. Sarcastic, and a bit more okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, I'm going to tell my mum. <laughs> mum, you Thank never you. guess what they called my performance. Sarca they did, dear. Sarcastic. No, you're not sarcastic. <laughs> oh, no, you're not sarcastic. Okay, thanks. Thanks Thank for you. the question. Hello. Hi. Um, so, this is my first con, and I'm a little nervous. But well, welcome. Thank Let's you. give her a welcome. <laughs> Yeah. 
It's, it's great. Uh, you know, I'm, I get nervous too, and uh, we are a family, aren't we? Isn't that the wonderful thing? And, uh, it, you know, every time I, I meet some people that are really nervous, some people have been here and they've heard me say the same things <laughs> over and over again, and they're still patient with me. Uh, but it's, it, it's great. It's, everybody's really friendly, so welcome, well, thank seriously. You. Um, my question is, Dad's favorite food is pizza, and I was wondering if you had like a favorite pizza, or if maybe you don't even like pizza. I like pizza. <laughs> I like junk food. I grew up in England, where my favorite food was chip butties. And chip, but anybody know what a chip butty is? There's somebody from England there, right? You, so, it, so you get sliced white bread, right? Malt vinegar. What you call French fries, I call chips, right? Greasy, you put them in, the, in there. And then um, salt, lots of salt. And then you smack the two pieces of white bread together and you eat it. That's, that's a chip butty. So I grew up with those as a treat. And then sometimes when we were really being fancy, we'd put a fish stick in there. <laughs> so. I, I, to me, when I first came on tour, I came on tour with a theater company. We went to New York City, and I couldn't believe pizza. I thought it was, it's a health food, because they had vegetables on top of it. <laughs> this green pepper, and sometimes red pepper, and mushrooms. So I was amazed, and I, I really did think it was, like, because in, in America, I guess it's people's fish and chips, really. Pizza is, like, everybody's food. And... Uh, I, I embraced it and loved it. And then when it came to shooting the episode of Supernatural, it was basically the first time I'd ever eaten Chicago deep dish pizza. My goodness. <laughs> it was like, and it was, and they'd got somebody in Vancouver to, that was an authentic Chicago pizza maker. And they got the whole thing. And of course, I, I was in heaven. Except, I ate too much, too quickly. So in the rehearsals, I was kind of going, oh yeah, this is good, all, all through the rehearsals. Meanwhile, uh, Jensen is kind of going, not eating much at all. And I'm thinking, he doesn't like it, the pizza, obviously. <laughs> well, little did I know, take 64. <sighs> <sighs> yeah, so. He was sensible. You'll notice in that scene, he very rarely touches it. He just goes, mm, no. Mm, no. Meanwhile, I'm going, mm, 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 mm. Yeah, behind the scenes, it's not very pretty. <laughs> uh, so anyway, to answer your question, yes, I love pizza, and I love hot dogs, and I love, I love all those things. Um, and I think that's what keeps me burning. I, I think my, my energy, I think that's... I'm not recommending junk food to anybody, but I think that's part of the reason I'm sort of like bouncing all over the place. Don't give me candies, otherwise you'll have to get me from up there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hello. Hi. Hi. Um, my question is, do you have a personal religious philosophy? And if so, how does that play into your portrayal of death? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, personal, like, I, I have an inherited religious take on the world, which I think we all do. Um, whether or not we go to church on Sunday or synagogue or mosque or wh wherever we go, um, to, it, you know, it, whether it's an organized religion or, it, you know, it's spirituality. So, I, I mean, I grew up in England, so I grew up in the Church of England and, you know, with all the belief system there. And there's, there's an awful lot of decency and rightness about it. But I'm, I can't say that I'm, you know, an avid, organized, religious observer. But I understand and deeply respect the spirituality of all the world religions. Um, and I think that's where a show like Supernatural is in very interesting territory. Because it's embracing not just religious views, but myths. Myths that religions grew out of, Nordic myths, um, myths, pagan myths, my, uh, that, that are also part of who we are and explain our place in the world and explain the darkness. They explain winter, 
summer, crops, the, de- the harvest, you know, those are very serious things. And I can't say that I have a, you know, well, I believe this and this explains it all. I, I search, I'm, I search spiritually as an actor, I search and I try to be open and tolerant and available really to um, whatever, whoever is there and be respectful of other people. I mean, that's all I can say is, is my f- practice um, but um, does that answer it? It's not. It's a bit of a. To the character of death. Um, I, well, very simply, I think that um, death is a psych- part of a cycle of life, and it's a very important part of that cycle. And without death, there wouldn't be no rebirth. Without darkness, there would be no light. So it's not a bad thing. It's a difficult thing but it's part of a cycle of life. And we all know it with grandparents, um, you know, with, with, with the mortality. So it's, it's a, an acceptance of, of our place in the world as not being just we're the center of it. Awesome. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thanks. Wow. We're getting to cover some stuff here. Hi. Hello. Uh, you actually answered my question like two questions ago, so I had to pull one out. Oh, wow. Uh, so I'm going to go with, what's your spirit animal? <laughs> what's it? Okay, now, honest, so uh, forgive me for being ignorant, but like, so uh, give me an example of a spirit animal. Um, if you imagined an animal that your Patronus, if you want to use Harry Potter, or something that represents you as you. Right, okay. Uh, um. I haven't really given it any thought, but I'll tell you one of my favorite animals um, that I would love to, like, uh, I find, I could watch forever and and moves me in some way, and I don't know why. It's a blue heron. Do any of you know a heron? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, there's something ungainly and beautiful about it. And I think that's why I love it, is because it's sort of, it doesn't look quite, there it doesn't look it looks a little frail but it's magnificent and beautiful so that that i guess can that be does that count yes it does yeah yes. yeah okay uh, so let's say that then okay thank you very much hi hello uh, so as we heard from like misha there's multiple stories about how jerry and jensen will mess with him on set have jerry and jensen ever mess with you on a set that you most me- remember they don't try it with me <laughs> I, I, and I can, sometimes I can see them sort of going off and I, I can see a little, their, their little collaboration and, and then I, I think they go, no, better not, <laughs> better not. And, and I don't know whether it's like respect, like he's, he's too serious, a, a wonderful actor to do that to, or whether it's like, no, the poor old bugger, he, it'll, <laughs> it'll completely throw him off his game. He's like, so I don't know, but they, they don't, and they, they never have. And um, I have wondered why sometimes, but you know, the, the reality is that a lot of the stuff that I do with the boys is very complicated. Like they're not just simple scenes, they're ones with a lot of food or like a special effect, like lights going and stuff. So there's lots of other things. So we can't afford to be too goofy and, and that's the beautiful thing about the boys is that they, they're, they're always ready for a joke, but they also have to do their jobs, and they do their jobs well. So I think it's a combination of those things that we, we haven't really got anything. I, 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 would love to, that I would love to play a prank on Misha. There's something about, there's something about Misha that makes you want to prank him. I, I don't know what it is, like, like to flip his ear or something in the middle of it. Like, I don't know why, so I, I wouldn't say it was so much Jared and Jensen, but it's more Misha. So if I could, I think I'd prank him. Okay. But I, I'm, not, I'm not funny. Like, I don't think of those things. I'm too busy focusing on all my stuff and keeping myself. As you can see, it's, a, it's an effort for me to keep still <laughs> and very spooky like this. <laughs> it's, I'm so busy concentrating on this that I haven't really got time to be funny. You know what I mean? <laughs> He says, laughing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Next question. Thank you. I have to say, 
I apologize in advance if we leave some, I, I'm kind of rambling, but I'm trying to give good answers that, that answer a lot of questions. We might leave some of you folks standing because we have to finish promptly because I have a date. Well, day, I, I, no, I have, to do, um, I have to do a sort of a phone-in thing with the show, which is very exciting, but I can't tell you anything about it. Um, and, anyway, so, but I have to go do it. So I apologize that I will be brief at the end. So for all you folks that may be left standing, I love you. <laughs> oh, I love that. Hang on. I, oh, by the way, I got, like, in my swanky hotel... I don't know about yours. There's these towels that are arranged by the staff. And sometimes you get towels arranged like in hearts. And there's, you don't know if it's a heart or it's a swan. Well, in the hotel I'm in right now, I've got this amazing towel art that's an elephant. It's like two, two I'm going to post it. I'll post it and show you later. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's like two, two little towels, a great big towel across for the ears, and a little trunk. It's amazing. I'm the problem is I'm not using the towels. <laughs> they're, they're so beautiful, I don't dare touch them. I've got, oh, that's a work of art. I'm not doing that. And it's like wet hands dripping all over the, the place. Anyway. Uh, uh, yes, hi. Uh, hi. Hello. I was wondering if the casting director gave you a reason why they chose you as deaf? And if not, why do you think you were chosen as deaf? Pity. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, you see, I did that on purpose so that all you guys would go, no, you're fantastic. But it, actually, it wasn't a very good response, really. I'm, I'm a bit disappointed. I was hoping you'd all go, no, you're brilliant. You're brilliant. Let's try it again. Pity. Oh, really? Uh, am I good? Oh, 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 wow. And these guys are going to uh, just tell me how good I am, everybody. I'm, uh, hi, I, I'm just fishing for compliments. So I can tell you something, man. I want to be into some real kinky role playing up here. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm backstage. You know, like, am I good? Tell me I'm a good boy. Tell me I haven't been naughty. <laughs> Julian Richings, you don't know how not to be naughty, my man. Yeah. And that's what makes you so, so, so good. <laughs> how awesome is this man on screen? How awesome is he on screen? How fun is he on stage? He's so fantastic. Okay, we still got the karaoke tonight. He'll right? be karaoke tonight. Has he told you about the new show he's doing? Julian Richings is doing a new show with Jeremy Carver called Doom Patrol, and he's leaving this stage to go do a table read for it right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Julian Richings! Love you. Bye. Thanks, guys. Nice. There's no uh, big, tall um, mic stand out here. I mean, there's this one. But it's got Is that no your mic new nickname it. for Jason? Mm -hmm.